Hello everyone, I got another question about dosing. So let's talk today about lost objects. Before I will read the question, let me introduce myself to those who never met me before. I'm Alicia Ratin and I talk for quite a long time about dowsing and once a month we prepare a video based mostly on the questions which I receive from you. So let, let me read the question, which will be our topic for April 22 video. Yes. Please do a video on finding lost objects or even lost pets, etc. I have success in finding things for myself, but not in helping a friend to find her keys I lost dogs. Why is that? Thank you so much for your knowledge and your time. Well, it's, it's my great pleasure to communicate with you all and talk about dowsing because it's quite a large or vast and fascinating field of spirituality. So first of all, congratulations to you because most people have a lot of success with finding different things and solving the problems of other people, their friends and clients and so on, but not their own. And we know that the doctor do not perform the surgery on the family member because we are emotionally too involved. And that's what is in most cases also the issue of dowsers looking for answers for themselves. So if you have such a success with your own, uh, finding your own solutions, you are already great. Now let's talk about finding those same things for others to help other people. When you want to find a lost object, then first of all, you have to know if the object is stable, which means um, stays in one place, stationary, like a keys. You lost the keys, but they are somewhere lying down. They are not able to relocate themselves. Or the other option is, as you said, looking, at, looking for something what is mobile. It's like a dog, like a person, and so on. And if we want to believe in it or not, police very often looks for a search, for a help of uh, dowsers to locate things which are lost or seems to be lost. First of all, let's think and talk about wavelength. If you, I made quite a few um, videos either about the wavelength itself, which means how to find your wavelength, or different aspects of dowsing in which wavelength is crucial. So today in your topic, the matter of wavelength is extremely important. Which wavelength you use to find this object. Let's talk about stationary object, like a car keys. What wavelength are you using? Your own, your client who lost those keys, or the keys? What do you want to identify? I understand that you have no problem with finding things which belong to you because you use them often and they kind of vibrate your energy. They are filled with your frequencies and therefore you see yourself through them and it's easier for you to connect with yourself in those keys. But when it's someone else's key, we have two types of approaches. You can approach it with the owner of the keys wavelength, which means you find the wavelength of Miss X and you find it and you operate from the wavelength of this person. Now I made it up right now, so please do not 
write a comment. Oh, I saw her moving her hand. Yes, I don't have anyone in, in mind. So I created this imaginary person uh, for whom I'm uh, doing this work. So I found her wavelength and therefore I will follow with her wavelength the object which belongs to her, which is key, car key. So I will kind of go with, follow her uh, wavelength of the ray coming of her toward those keys. And therefore I will go with the pendulum in a sense, because you can work through the plan of the house or something like that, until I will locate the keys. But there is another aspect. So we can have her in our mind and then ask for the wavelength of her car keys. Therefore, we don't have to go from her to, key, to car keys, but we can go and find directly the car keys. All right? So then you ask, you say, show me the wavelength of Miss Gray's car keys. And it's, it's this, let's say. Again, it's imaginary person uh, to me right now. And I will go through the plan of the house to find out where the car keys are located. The next aspect of finding stationary object is to, if it's, if it's an object belonging to someone else, is to work with the witness. So let's say your friend cannot come to you, but you have her handwriting. And when you have this handwriting, you have the energy locked on this sheet of paper and then you can read her energy field from this sheet of paper. So now, if you want to look for something from this signature, then, of course, you, you, you can find her wavelength or through her energy field, again, you can find the wavelength or car keys and do exactly the same. It's just a different approach. It is always the best to have a witness because then you are independent. You can work during the night. I, I like very much working at late hours just because the energy of the planet is quieter. Therefore, there is less interferences with my reading and other people wavelengths and so on. And people mostly are stationary at that time because they are asleep, unless of course you work for someone from far away with way different time zone and therefore they are not asleep, but it's it's different story then. So remember about the witness. Witness will provide you independence in your work, unless the situation is very urgent and you have to work at that moment. So you are connecting with the person who you are talking to over the phone or on Zoom or through any other media. Another important aspect of it is what tools you use. Because when you connect with objects through yourself, or the objects of people who are close to you and they are very strongly energetically connected with you, it seems to be easier to cut, to, to catch this ray which connects you with other people or other objects. But when we are talking about working for others as well, then the quality of tools matters. So do remember to work with some with the objects, with the pendulums, which are pointy, because you don't want to find the area. You want to find a specific point 
And when you want to find a point, you need something what kind of sends like a um, like a ray and zooms down to the specific point in your room, not the area of the room. That would do the area you will find with a pendulum which is round, like a ball, even golden hue pendulum, which is not pointy. So if you will have an Isis type of, or, or a Renova or something like this, Atlantis, depending what pendulum you have or you want to have, then it will show you exactly the point in which the object is located. You can use a pendulum which is called left turn spiral, which spirals seven times, and it's very important that it spirals seven times. We can make another video about the, uh, the spiritual meaning of, of numbers, not numerology, but spiritual meaning of objects creating specific numbers. But a uh, left turn pendulum is very pointy. It is not therapeutic pendulum, but it's highly sensitive pendulum if you want to narrow down something. If you will work with something like, for example, Super Isis or Isis, then again, they are, they are pointy and they will help you to do that. I would suggest to work with a pendulum which is therapeutic. Just because when you work with therapeutic pendulum, first of all, the aura of the pendulum is very dense and condensed and it is not infected by any other vibrations which are around. That's why we call them self-clearing. And they will help you to focus on this one thing you said you want to find. So again, not only the witness, the wavelength, but also the quality of the tool which you need. You don't have to be a healer to use therapeutic pendulums. Very many people use them because they are more uh, reliable and the energy is more focused. There is a lot more energy as well, but this energy is more focused on the topic of your dowsing research. And then the topic which is extremely wide, vague, and needs really a special lecture. It is how to find a, the mobile object, which means a person who rides the bike, the person who drives the car, the dog which is lost, and run somewhere in the parks or whenever it is right now. Unfortunately, it is our videos are too short to explain that with a very uh, detailed manner. And if I will miss or skip some parts, it may not be very valuable. On our website, among online courses, there is a course which is called under category of dowsing. There is a course dowsing as a life enhancer. And I talk there about, among other things um, about dowsing, I refer also to finding um, objects which are in transition, which means mobile objects or people. So, if you can, please refer to this course and watch it there because, as I said, it is more complex and there is graphs involved in all this. Thank you very much for, for being with me uh, in today's video. Thank you for your interest in dowsing. Please join our channel so you will be notified about new pieces of our videos regarding different aspects of dowsing, mostly scientific dowsing. If you are interested, you can also join us on a private group of scientific dowsers, which meet once a month on Zoom. In order to become a member of this group, please send 
us an email from contact us on our website and we will tell you how to join the group thank you very much have a wonderful time the housing and visit our website intuitivedowsing.com to learn more about different objects different types of dowsing and pendulums and different lectures. <laughs>